This time on Rock Up Racing, we're at the electrifying Dunnington Park GP circuit for the grand finale of Bernie's V8 season. Brace yourself as we navigate unexpected twists and heart-stopping turns, with brake challenges and suspension tweaks adding to the drama. But there's another unpredictable player in the game, a looming threat of rain that could turn the tables at any moment. Will the team triumph against the odds and seal the season on a high note? Join us for a thrilling ride you won't forget, only on Rock Up Racing. Stay tuned. Welcome to Rock Up Racing. We're back. We are back. And uh, it's the last race of the season. It's finally here. But um, no, it's great. We're, uh, we're heading to uh, Donington, Donington Park, and uh, doing the final race with uh, Bernie's V8s and Outlaws. So, um, yeah, so excited. We're, uh, we're going to get loaded up now. We're going to get loaded up now and uh, get ready to go. But first, we need some breakfast. Is that a camera? It's the return of your boy. <laughs> it's tiny. Mr. Tom, it's uh, Tommy Gunn. He's back. And look, da, 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 da. the Norfolk mechanic is back. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Morning. Hello. You're not having a good day. Not yet. Be nice. Yeah, but it'd be nice if that was the only thing that broke, wouldn't it? Yeah. I got in, tried to put it in reverse, and it just went all the way over. So, already, um, Robert's broken uh. his gear stick in his own car. Yeah, we love the video. I can't believe that one happens. You've got too strong a left arm, that's your problem. Yeah, you know why that is. <laughs> <laughs> As this is the grand finale of Rock Up Racing season, and the atmosphere is electric, their eyes are on two prizes. Top results to round out the year, and ensuring the car gets through the weekend with no issues. With qualifying and a pair of races ahead, there's no room for error. Mechanics Tom and Ash are on point conducting meticulous scrutineer checks to ensure the car is race ready for tomorrow. The excitement builds as we gear up for the last lap in this high octane season. We made it! We're here. I saw you here. The Norfolk mechanic is here. We're ready. So uh, I think uh, I think GT Cup are on track, so we're gonna go just watch a little bit of that. And uh, yeah, and then head to the hotel and then head to the bar. Gotta get a beer down. I think so. <laughs> Rock Up Racing is more than just a race team, they're a family. The night before race day is as much a part of the experience as the competition itself. Drinks in hand, food on the table, they gather to share laughs, talk strategy, and anticipate the excitement of what tomorrow holds. It's these moments, as much as any victory on the track, that make the racing weekends unforgettable. It's about having fun and getting drunk, that's all I care about. <laughs> 
We don't see that. Yeah. There's no one left. As the 2023 season of Bernie's V8s and historic outlaws comes to a close, the excitement is far from over. This series revives the authentic spirit of classic motorsport, featuring thunderous V8s like Corvettes, Mustangs, and TVRs, as well as iconic sports cars like Porsches and Jaguars. Under the dedicated guidance of Bernie and his sons, Simeon and Adam, the series has delivered race after race of unfiltered excitement. With straightforward rules and a focus on pure racing thrills. It's been a wild, unforgettable season. Excited yes. Him speaking to the phone and microphone these days. <laughs> I, I'm meant to do my customary. Yes, I'm really excited. Excellent. That's all. That's all we need to know. <laughs> so, um, are you excited for the race? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to be great. Me too. With the car primed for the racetrack, the team's focus narrows down to the crucial details: tire pressures for qualifying. Robert huddles with mechanics Tom and Ash, deliberating over pressures and temperatures before settling on the optimal settings to run. Have you got a uh, tire pressure strategy today? Um, Tom's got it all. It's all in Tom's head. Uh, Tom, Tom is the tire man. I think, I think we're going back more towards what we used to run. Right. Um, I think we were too low in quality at Alton, so we're going to go a bit higher for that. And then as it gets warmer through the day, I think we'll sort of bring it back down. But then race two might be wet, so... Yeah. Coming. It might be wet. The old, the old, the old wet tyres coming out, because you know why? It always rains at Le Mans. All right. You don't necessarily want to come in. True, yeah.
In the thick of the qualifying session, Robert faces a couple of hurdles. Not only is this his first time racing the blue 964 at Donington Park's GP circuit, but it's also been roughly a year since he last took to this particular track. These factors are stacked against him as he strives to clock in some consistent lap times. Ninth at the moment. Do you reckon uh, the tyres are going off or something? I mean, he's just done quick as lap. I don't think so. He's coming up now. Let's see what he does. What was that? 147. 47.1. To be fair, all the times, all the times are quite close together, aren't they? They are. Yeah. Between him and fifth is 0.3. Yeah. So it's not a lot. So finished qualifying ninth. So, um, but Tom said there's a 0.3 of a second between ninth and fifth. So it is going to be a very, very tight race. Very tight. So should make should make for some good racing. You alright? It's a tough qualifying session for Robert, landing him in ninth position. There's work to do on the track, but he's up for the challenge. Is the car right? Yeah. Nice one. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? That's the car fit. I think we need to soften it again, I bet. Soften it in. Yeah, it sort of skips a little bit. Type pressure to the bang on. Are they? What were they? They're within a quarter of a PSI of each other. Of what? 29. Okay, so they may have been slightly too high out there because. It was quite slow cooling and down the lap. I don't know how much we'd lose in the lap. Okay. Following qualifying, Robert suggests softening up the car. He's experiencing pad knockback, which occurs when vibrations or disc movement push the brake pads away from the brake disc. This could be a serious problem, as it might cause inconsistent brake feel or even momentary loss of braking. Additionally, Robert feels the brake pedal is a bit soft at times indicating the brakes may need to be bled to remove any trapped air in the system. Go on, so what is the weather update now? What are we thinking? 30% chance at 6 o'clock. Maximum is a 40% chance, so the odds are low. But it is a thunderstorm morning. There is a thunderstorm so morning as well, yeah. If it does rain, it's going to rain properly. Thunderstorm morning all the way. The team is closely watching the ever-changing weather forecast. A storm is expected to roll in right around the time of their second race at 6 p.m. While the potential for rain adds another layer of complexity, the immediate focus remains on race one. Are you all right, Ray? Being on the left side is better to start with, is it? We always like being on the outside. Outside start is good. It's my favorite. I prefer that every round. Oh, All right. Does it just give you more room, or something? I tend to think so. Yeah. I think in like a higher level, professional level of racing, being on the outside, you risk someone doing something stupid at the middle and taking everyone out. But in this, right, like people tend to be fairly sensible, and you have space on the outside normally. Right. There's a bit of a green tarmac run off, isn't there? Yeah. So the, are the tyres the same? The tyres the same as the qualifying? The tyres the same. Brakes are bled. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it really. Yeah. Soften the car a bit, front and back, two clicks. Um, hopefully make it a bit more compliant. Up from that. Perfect. Contender. 
As race one gears up for action, there's a last minute shuffle. A competitor ahead of Robert is sidelined due to mechanical issues, which moves Robert up to an eighth place start. Directly ahead of him is Martin Ellis, driving a Talbot Sunbeam Lotus, and right on Robert's tail is Tim Bates in another Porsche 911. Both are competitors in Robert's historic outlaw class. The tension is palpable. The stage is set for what promises to be a gripping race. The race kicks off, but it's not the start Robert had hoped for. Required to keep level with the car beside him until the lights go out, he finds himself slightly disadvantaged when that car fails to maintain pace with the pack ahead. Now there's work to be done, as Robert finds himself in a catch-up position right from the get-go. Tweaks made by Tom and Ash on the brakes proved to be beneficial. The brake response is noticeably better, allowing Robert to navigate the track with increased confidence. He's, uh, he's up to sixth, which is awesome. Car looks to be doing well. He's, he's already beaten the times that he did in qualifying, so must be feeling good. It is getting dark over here. I would not be surprised if we get some rain soon. But so far, so good. Deep into the race, a car encounters an issue and pulls off at turn one, prompting the appearance of the safety car. The dynamics of the race are now set to change as the cars slow down and bunch up. Robert glances in his mirrors to find Tim Bates, a rival in the same class, just a few lengths behind. Looking ahead, Robert also spots the Talbot Sunbeam Lotus, the current class leader, and knows that the upcoming restart could be a golden opportunity. safety car pulls in, the tension mounts. The rules dictate that no car can overtake until they've crossed the start-finish line. Robert gears up, focusing intently on the road ahead, while also keeping an eye on his rearview mirror. No, God! No, God, please! Before Robert even crosses the start-finish line, he finds himself overtaken by two cars including fellow historic outlaw class competitor, Tim Bates. This setback creates a gap between him and the leading cars, making the chase ahead even more challenging. Now Robert will need to dig deep and regain lost ground if he wants to stay in contention.
Robert executes a skillful maneuver going through McLean's, overtaking Tim Bates and reclaiming his second place position in the historic outlaw class. With that crucial move behind him, he sets his sights on Martin Ellis in the Talbot Sunbeam Lotus, who leads the class. The race is heating up and every corner counts. Robert is pushing the car to its limits, steadily gaining on Ellis and the Talbot. Each lap that passes is a reminder that time is running out to make his move. The tension is palpable. Can he close the gap and take the class lead before the checkered flag drops? Robert made significant strides in closing the gap to Ellis, the laps just ran out too quickly. Despite the ticking clock, he managed to secure an impressive second place in his class. Truly, it was a race filled with twists and turns, proving once again that in motorsport, anything can happen. I'll tell you what, I did really well. I'm so happy to get back past Tim. And, uh, it was yeah, it was brilliant. No, was the car right? Yeah, it's fine. Awesome. The brakes are not great. I think we're definitely in new pad territory. New pads? Yeah, they just don't feel like that. Right? Stop it. Right though. Oh, uh, brilliant. Following that roller coaster of a race, the team takes a moment to inspect the car, top off the fuel and then turns their attention to the ever-changing sky. The forecast isn't giving any clear answers. Will the heavens open up before their second race? It's yet another variable in a day that's already been full of surprises. Now that one is coming. Which one? That one. So we just had that one. Right. But that, that one is coming just before six. <laughs> Five o'clock, the radar looked heavy, like really heavy. Over the track? Yeah. Yeah, and it looks like it's going to absolutely oh. throw it now. What time's that race? Six? Six o'clock. Oh, could be a wet race. Brian for rain. That's all we need. So the, well, yeah. There you go. Oh, you're absolutely the... right. That's completely changed from Has when it? we were having the conversation last time. It's now saying 90% at, six, at yeah. four o'clock. 90%. 90% at five o'clock. So... The track won't dry, will it, by six? If it's 90 If it's going to be... Does, if it's going to hell it down. Two hours, Okay, fingers crossed. What are we saying? We're saying... Prep the wets, mate. Prep, Prep the, the wets. wets. We need to um, just make sure we've got enough air in them. Air? 
Yeah. Right. Right out. With the threat of rain becoming increasingly likely, the team preps the wet tires for action. These decade-old wets have been called into service multiple times this season, and it looks like they may have one more battle ahead of them. Will they hold up for this final race? Tom's strategy is a bit of a gamble. He plans to mount two wet tires while keeping the other side on dry. This setup gives the team some flexibility. If the rain doesn't materialize, they can quickly switch them back, adapting to whatever the weather throws their way. Clock ticks toward the Bernie's V8's final race at 6 p.m. Tension mounts in the paddock. The preceding race is already overrunning due to weather conditions, putting the team in a tight spot. They're now up against three significant challenges. The relentless downpour, the fading daylight, and a hard cutoff for racing at 7 p.m. The question on everyone's mind is whether they'll actually make it onto the track for this climactic season finale. Right boys, I got back just in time. I'm ready to go. Just remember Rob, I've got well, rain for you. you Do your best. Again here. Thanks for a great weekend, chaps. For the radicals in second. <laughs> Treacherous conditions make every move a calculated risk. What would normally be a straightforward maneuver now becomes a high stakes ballet of skill and control. The drivers are slipping and sliding through turns, finding the limits of their machines in these testing conditions. Robert has managed to navigate the slippery maze of the track exceptionally well. He's sitting in a strong second place overall and holds the first position in his class. The work done by Tom and Ash on the brakes and the strategic tire choices are paying off. But with conditions like these, the race is far from over.
deep into the race, Robert catches a glimpse of Aston Blake in a TVR Tuscan closing in fast, reflected in his rearview mirror. The TVR is gunning for that second overall position. Now, Robert faces a dual challenge. Not only does he need to maintain his grip on the treacherous track, but he also has to defend his hard-earned spot from a surging opponent. Aston manages to slip past Robert, the sheer power of the TVR Tuscan proving too much to hold back. Despite giving it his all, Robert now finds himself in third overall, but still leading his class. The focus shifts to holding this position while assessing any opportunities to reclaim that second spot. Every corner, every straightaway now carries added weight as the race nears its conclusion. After a fiercely contested race against both the elements and formidable opponents, Robert crosses the finish line in third place overall and secures a first place in his class. There he is. Hey. Awesome. Brilliant. Third place. I'm so <laughs> Right, let's get this man a beer. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like? Pretty slippery. Yeah, I can imagine. I think, yeah. I think, there's, um, I think those tyres probably need to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they're just knackered. Yeah. Yeah. The, ten year, the ten year old wet tyres? Yeah. Ah, they've done us some good. Thank you very much. Yeah, right. There's no heat in the Mesa. No. Uh, but I mean, we have driven back from puddles, so we really lose the free train. Nah. I think that's probably what happened as soon as I lost the. Quick cars, I lost the heat probably and made it hard, but then just sort of look after it. So. No, you did really well, mate. Well, yeah, it was brilliant. It was great. What a fantastic race. What a weekend. What a weekend. Coming away, third place, podium place, first in class. What a way to end the weekend. Brilliant. Right, thank you all for watching. It's the last race of the season, so we've got so many projects um, lined up for over the winter, so. We'll, uh, we'll be posting those on YouTube and keep you all involved and we'll see you next season. Thanks for watching. I'm bloody exhausted. Racing with you, Rob. I mean, listen, mate, you did very well, but how do you beat a car that's seconds faster And I think with the time coming up I'll tell you what, come up with a plan. More to take the chance now. First take of the all, engine out of my Bentley, put it in your Porsche, and the then you could be a historic V8 outlaw. With weather, but I'm afraid you've all got rather wet in the latter part of